So let's talk now about x86 instructions. First, let's begin by looking at uh, memory instructions, so dealing with registers and memory. The first simplest is the register mode. So here, what we're looking at is moving from basically one register to another register. So from the EAX register into the EDX register, move L means move along, that is a 32-bit value. So effectively, what's that doing is EDX equals EAX. So this is the effect, sort of the C version of this instruction, and this is the name of it. Another thing we can do is we can move an actual value. So in this case, we're moving the dollar sign, says that we're immediate mode. OX is hexadecimal, so we're moving the hexadecimal value, one, two, three, into the EDX register. So that's called immediate mode, and basically that's like the C code, where we're saying EDX equals OX, again for hexadecimal, one, two, three. We can also do direct mode, where instead of specifying this as an actual value to put in the register, this is the address of a uh, the value we want to put in. So this will actually indirect through address 123 uh, into EDX. So you notice the equivalent C is we take 123, cast it to a point or two along, and then dereference it. The indirect is slightly different. So there, in, the, in this direct case, we actually know the uh, at, at a symbol time, the memory address that we're trying to dereference. Here we don't know it, that memory address is inside a register. So this indirects through that register. So the only difference then is instead of the hardwired, hard coded value 123, we're taking whatever's in the EBX register. And then finally, the displacement says instead of just directly taking this value in the register, go ahead and add a number to it first. So we take instead of EBX, EBX plus 4, and that rep represents the 4 here. Why would we want to do that? Well, it's used in a number of different cases. Uh, one case is for the stack. So we will often have values on the stack. So let's say the stack pointer is pointing here. So this is 0 of the stack pointer, 4 of the stack pointer, 8 of the stack pointer, 12 of the stack pointer. So we might want to go up in the stack to get it values. So we would just change this value here from 4 to whatever number we want. And another common case this comes up is, is in pointers to structures. So if we have, let's say, a struct S, which has uh, L1, L2, L3, right? And then let's say we've got a pointer to such structure X. Okay, so somewhere we then try and access X arrow L3. What is actually going to get generated? Well, X is going to be our pointer to our value, and we will want to offset 0 from X, 4 of X, 8 of X to get to that third value. So we would use this displaced mode for that. We wouldn't normally use it actually to be the compiler that it, that it generated for us. The stack and operations that deal with their stack. So an important thing to realize is that the stack grows down. Okay, this is sort of one to remember in uh, Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card, where the saying is that the enemy's gate is down. For us, the stack always grows down, at least on x86. Okay. By down, what do we mean? What we mean is the if we have a stack with three elements in it, the top of the stack, the last one that's pushed, so let's, let's say we push three, we push two, we push one, the stack pointer is going to be pointing to this top of stack, which is the lowest memory address. If these are 32-bit values, this is ESP, this is ESP plus four, and this is ESP plus eight. Okay. So when we push a value, all right here we're going to push the contents of the AX register. Effectively what's happening, and we, we could replace it in fact if we wanted with these two instructions, subtract four from the ESP to make room, 
and then move the value that we want onto the, the stack pointer. But we prefer to use this because it happens so often, it saves us a, an instruction. And pop really does the opposite. It moves whatever's on the top of the stack into the uh, designated location, in this case percent %ex, and then adds for to ESP so that we're now pointing to the new top of stack, what used to be second from top of stack. So the call function calls this particular location. So again, this can be a direct absolute address, or there might be an indirect call. Here, what does it do? It pushes the instruction, the current instruction pointer. And that's not really true. It's not really the current instruction pointer. It's the instruction pointer uh, uh, after the call instruction. So it's basically where we want to return to. Okay. We have an asterisk here because this is not actually a possible instruction. You're not allowed to mess with the instruction pointer. You can't push it. You can't pop it. You can only use instructions that are designed to deal with the instruction pointer. So, uh, but the effect is we push the instruction pointer onto here. And again, it's really the instruction pointer after incrementing after the current instruction. And then we move whatever the value is that we're trying to go to into the instruction pointer. And as well, that is not a legal operation. A return just pops the instruction pointer. Again, the asterisk, we're not allowed to pop into the instruction pointer. We can do return. Okay, so the stack grows down, and it's often used to, to implement uh, procedure calls or just temporary storage of items. So there are different kinds of instructions. Uh, we've seen some of these data movement instructions, move, push, pop. There are arithmetic instructions, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, those sorts of things. Um, you can shift left, shift right, uh, test, uh, we'll consider an arithmetic expression. IO, so these are the in out instructions. So these are the ones that actually uh, uh, IO to an output port or IO to a port. Not going to commonly use those because these days we use memory mapped IO. There are control functions. So normally what happens is instructions just follow one by one by one by one by one sequentially, but there are some that actually change the control, like the call function or the return function. There is also a jump that doesn't bother putting the old return address. So if you had a loop, let's say, and you want to go back to the beginning of the loop, the jump would be an appropriate instruction. Or if you had a, a loop where you want to jump to the beginning, if something is uh, not zero, that would be the J and Z instruction. We have some special instructions for strings and then some system instructions. So these, the interrupt and the I return, are actually privileged instructions. So if you're in kernel mode, that's fine, that'll work. If you're not in kernel mode, it will actually put you into kernel mode. One key thing to be aware of, the syntax, and in particular, the order of operands. So the AT and Z syntax, which is what you will be using, is this op source dest. So if we have move from EAX to EBX, let's say. In Intel, it's different. It's more like an equal sign. So this would be uh, the destination first and then the source. That's a great confusion. And one other difference is the at and syntax uses a B or W or L to signify the width that's being moved. So move B, move W, move L. Okay. What are we going to be using? We're going to be using almost everything we see will be the AT&T syntax. That's what's used by GCC. That's what's used in the XV6 books where, where we see uh, uh, any, any handwritten assembler. Um, the only case you'll probably see the Intel syntax is if you're actually looking at Intel references. There may be cases you need to do that. And in that case, you're going to need to just kind of convert it yourself. And then the final thing to look at is the eFlags register. So this has a bunch of information about the current state. The most important information there that really matters to you is some of this status information about uh, arithmetic. So sign zero, possibly carry, possibly overflow maybe, okay? Um, 
And so these are used for these conditional jump instructions. Remember, we had like a jump if not zero or jump if equal zero. So how's that done? Well, there's a, a compare instruction, which will actually compare two values and then set the appropriate bits in the E flags register. And then the next instruction can be a, let's say, a conditional jump instruction, and it will look at the values. So if you compare E x to zero, then the zero flag is going to be set if E x is equal to zero. Uh, the sign flag is going to be set based on whether AX is greater than zero or less than zero. So therefore, you can do the various conditional jumps, uh, jump less than zero, jump greater than zero, jump equal, jump not equal, all those sorts of things. So that's our, our very brief introduction.